Over the past few months, we have published several articles on moments of sets bounded by subdivision manifolds. Our series began with a derivation of mole volume enclosed by subdivision surfaces. Using the framework, we were able to state for the first time exact volumes of Du Sabin, Catmull Clark, and Loop subdivision surfaces. The volume formula was extended to Catmull Clark and Loop surfaces with sharp creases. Then we investigated moments of low degree for common curve subdivision schemes. The formulas give the area enclosed by the curve as well as the centroid and inertia of the interior set. This video accompanies our most recent publication on the topic, Moments of Sets Bounded by Subdivision Surfaces. Since the volume computation is covered by our previous publications, we put the emphasis on centroid and inertia. Let's continue with a few examples. This is the unit cube with two opposing corners elevated by one. The mesh defines the Du-Sabin limit surface that has volume and centroid position as indicated. The inertia is visualized as the ellipsoid with equivalent inertia. The next example states the moments of low degree in symbolic form as well as in numeric precision. Again, the ellipsoid is centered at the centroid and has identical inertia as the set bounded by the Du-Sabin subdivision surface. This pyramid mesh is subdivided with loop scheme. The relevant dimensions of the control mesh are indicated as well as the Z component of the centroid defined by the limit surface. At this point in time, we're unable to compute the inertia. Here is a more complex triangular mesh that is also subject to loop subdivision. In addition, two edge cycles are marked as sharp creases, where cubic B-spline subdivision rules for curves apply. These types of algorithms are also handled by our framework, and we can compute and visualize the centroid. The moment is the integral over the set omega that is the interior of the subdivision surface. The function to integrate is the monomial in xyz to the power of pqr respectively. Using the divergence theorem, the integral can be rewritten to an integral of the subdivision surface. In order to integrate over the surface, we use the partition of patches that have a one-to-one -one correspondence to the facets of the mesh. The illustrations show the correspondence for catmull clark and loop. In the bottom row, a Du-Sabin mesh is subdivided twice before the dual mesh of quads is used to parameterize the surface partition. The moment is the sum of the moment contribution by each facet. In the illustration, the facets are colored based on their contribution to the global moment. The monomials up to degree 2 are listed. The types of facets are classified easily by the valency of a non-regular vertex. Here we list the types of low valency for the three most common subdivision algorithms. The surface patch associated to the facet is completely determined by the control points in the one ring of the facet. Specifically, the moment contribution of a single facet is the d plus 3 linear form with the xyz coordinates of the control points from the one ring as input. The tensors y depend on the subdivision weights, the degree of the moment, and the valency of the non-regular vertex. The coefficients of the tensor y have an expression as integral. The functions b are the basis function characteristic to the subdivision scheme and parameterize the surface patch. The basis function do not have a closed form expression in general. However, from the integral, we can derive several symmetries of the tensor y. Swapping the last two indices inverts the sign. The integral is invariant under permutation of the first d plus 1 factors. For regular facets, there is a rotational symmetry. Usually, there is also a mirror symmetry in the subdivision weights. Once the coefficients for the regular topology are established, a subset of the coefficients appears in the tensor for the non-regular types. The main equations come from demanding that the moment formula is invariant under one or more rounds of subdivision. On the level of facets, that means that the contribution of the facet equals the sum of the contribution of the four smaller facets after one round of subdivision. The similar recursive relation helps to find the moment contribution for facets adjacent to sharp creases. But here the classification of the facet topologies is not as simple. Until this point, the trivial tensor y equals to zero is also in the solution space. The final calibration step truncates the solution space to the tensors that result in the desired correct moment value. We perform calibration using meshes that have as limit surface the unit cube or the axis aligned tetrahedron. Their moments are known and stated here. Before we conclude, we remark on the complexity of the linear systems that need to be solved in order to obtain the tensors y. On a computer with 8 GB RAM, we obtain the tensors for the centroid of two Sabin meshes up to valency 9. For the inertia, we only manage valencies 3 and 4. The catmull clark scheme, on the other hand, would require a more powerful computer and is left as future work. Once the tensors are derived, the moment formula is universal for all closed, orientable meshes. 
Our source code is available online. We also remarked that the moment of degree zero, the volume, is much simpler to solve than centroid or inertia. For instance, we can compute the volume of a Catmull Clark surface with vertices of valence up to 16 symbolically. Thank you for watching.